If you're looking for an online whiteboard, you've come to the right place. This video is part of a series where I'm evaluating the most known whiteboards. Starting from the more simple ones like Google Jamboard, Zoom Whiteboard and Microsoft Whiteboard, and then moving to the more advanced ones like Miro, Mural and Klaxoon. In the whiteboard review sheet that you can download for free from my website, link is in the description, you'll find a summary of all the features of all these whiteboards. And if these whiteboards are not enough for you, then you'll also find a list of all the other whiteboards that I know. Let's now review Google Jamboard. You can access it from the list of your Google Apps or go to jamboard.google.com. To create a new Jamboard, click on plus at the bottom right. The graphic user interface is clean, simple and also very black and white. The main control panel is in the middle left, then we have a few other options at the top left and then the sharing options at the top right. Let's start with the inking tools. By default, we have a pen, then there is a marker, highlighter, and brush. And we have six available colors. Let's start by trying the pen. Then let's try the marker, this time in red. The highlighter in yellow. And the brush in green color. Seems to be maybe semi-transparent. Let's try to ink over something that I've already written. Indeed, it's transparent. So for writing on the whiteboard, maybe the marker is my preferred tool. The drawing experience is okay, but I miss a few features. I can't choose the thickness of the inking tool. Maybe a few more color options would have been nice. One of the biggest limitations of Google Jamboard is that the inking content can't be really modified, selected or moved around. In fact, if I select the Select tool and I try to select what I've just written, I can't do it. So there is nothing I can do on content that I've inked. I can't move it and I cannot even delete it at once. The only thing I can do is erase it. So let's look at the Eraser tool. If I go over my inked text, we can see that the eraser works pixel by pixel. This is something that I actually like and is very useful if you're drawing something. Many other whiteboards don't offer this pixel by pixel erasing feature, but they only allow to erase the full stroke. So the eraser is good, but it would have been nice to have the option to select content and delete it all at once. The next tool is select, but we've seen that it doesn't really work with inked content. So let's move on to the next feature, which is sticky note. By clicking on it, a new dialog box appears. In a sticky note, we can add text and we can choose the color. Let's keep the classic yellow and add some text. When we save a sticky note, it is placed on the Jamboard, but the dialog box remains active, which is useful if we want to add multiple sticky notes at once. So let me add a second one and this time in pink color. The first thing we notice is that the inked content is on top of the sticky note and is semi-transparent. So let's see what we can do then with the sticky note. I can move it around, make it larger or smaller, and the text will follow it. I can rotate it, and that's pretty much it. I can't further format the text. Now the second sticky note is underneath the first one, but if I select Order, and bring it to front, I'm able to position one object on top of the other. The next feature is Add Image. This is a nice one because it allows you to upload images from your drive, but also paste a URL, use your camera, or search images directly on Google. You can also upload images directly from your Google Drive or Google Photos. I'll look for a pen image and insert it. When the image is on the board, I can also resize it, rotate it, duplicate it, delete it, or also choose the order. Let me put it to the back. If you're finding this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button, so more people will have the chance to watch it and you will help me grow my channel. Thank you. The next tool is the Shape tool. There are eight available shapes. Let's make an ellipse and an arrow. We have a couple of formatting options available for shapes. That's the border color and also the fill color. The next tool is the text box. The text box can be enlarged or made smaller. 
For text, we have a few formatting options. We can select the size from display to caption. Let's make it a bit bigger. Then we can choose the font color. Let's do it green and also the alignment. Let's do it in the middle. There are no other text formatting options, so I can't make it bold, italic, and I can't choose the font type, just to name a few. The last option of this toolbar is the laser. This is very handy if you're presenting your Jamboard. You can use it to highlight parts of the board without actually leaving inked content on it. The laser will disappear automatically after a couple of seconds. Now that we have all types of objects on the board, let's see what we can do with them. So let's go to the Select tool, and we can see that we can move them around, rotate them as we've seen already. But if I try to select multiple objects at the same time, for example, with drag and drop, this is not possible. So the group selection limitation is not valid just for the inked content, but for any type of object on the board. In addition to it, objects cannot be locked on the whiteboard. Now there is almost no space left on the whiteboard, which brings me to what is one of the limitations of Google Jamboard, according to me. That is the limited canvas size. Many whiteboards have an infinite canvas, but Google Jamboard doesn't. I think the reason behind it is because the board has been thought for teachers and it's trying to replicate as close as possible the features of a real physical whiteboard. So when one whiteboard is full, you have to go to a new one. In Google Jamboard, you do that by going to the center top and click on Expand Frame Bar. By clicking on plus, you basically add a new page to your whiteboard. These pages in Google Jamboard are called frames. You can create up to 20 frames in a Jamboard and you can work on a frame just by selecting it from this pane. So now we have a blank canvas and I'll use it to show you the next feature, which is Set Background. There are six options here with dots, lines, squares, etc. But what I find mostly interesting is the possibility to add an image as background. So for example, I can go to Google Image Search and search for a blackboard. Now I can pick the white color and start writing on my blackboard. This line is not very nice, so I can undo by Ctrl Z on PC or just click this back arrow here. At the top right, we find the sharing options. By clicking on this button, we can present to a Google Meet meeting. So if you have a Google Meet in your calendar, it will show here, or you can present using a meeting code. By clicking on the three dots, we see that we can rename it, download it as PDF, save one frame as image, remove it or make a copy. And the last button is share. You can share it with people in groups, you can decide the access restrictions and by clicking on the cogwheel, you can decide whether editors can change permissions and share and whether viewers and commenters can see the option to download, print and copy. When you share the whiteboard with someone, you can decide what rights this person has and you have the choice between editor or viewer. So all in all, the Google Jamboard is a good starter whiteboard. First of all, it's free. And then it has some nice features, like the pixel by pixel eraser that can be very useful if you're focusing on drawing. Images can be inserted directly from Google search and they can be set as background. On the minus side, at least for me, the Google Jamboard doesn't have an infinite canvas and it's not really thought for collaboration. There are no reactions, no voting, no templates. It's a good whiteboard with limited features that seems to be more useful to teachers than to business people. The focus is definitely not on collaboration, but rather on teachers who have to teach frontal lessons. If you now want to compare Google Jamboard to Zoom whiteboard, you should watch this next video. Or if you want to go to the next step and watch my review of the more advanced Miro whiteboard, watch this video here. This or this.